You're watching KCCI, Channel 8, Des Moines. Iowa's news leader and home of live Super Doppler. This is KCCI News Channel 8 at 6. Our people are, are very thrilled that, that he'd come here and he'd come to this community. Running okay. Getting ready for guests is always stressful, but imagine trying to get ready for a visit by the president. We'll show you what one Des Moines company is doing to prepare for a visit by President Bush. Law enforcement is 99% boredom and 1% sheer terror. And that's just a real good synopsis of what happened. The minutes after an Urbandale bank robbery was sheer terror for police officers, tonight new information in yesterday's robbery that ended with the deaths of two people. The purpose of our inspection programs is to be the public's eyes, ears, and nose out there that in places that they can't be. And the Department of Agriculture doesn't like what it found in Conrad. Good evening, thanks for joining us. It was enough to suspend operations at the Franzenberg Meat Locker. Today, employees spent much of the afternoon throwing away bad meat. KCCI News Channel 8's Chris Nagus was there and joins us now with our top story. Chris? Well, Cynthia, it all started when the Grundy County Sheriff's Department started receiving complaints about the quality of meat being processed and stored at the meat locker. And it didn't take long for inspectors from the Department of Agriculture to get involved. One word of caution, though, some video in this next story isn't pretty. I just do my job. It's a job most people probably wouldn't want. What was your job here today? Just to help throw out meat. At the Franzenberg Meat Locker, they are throwing out a lot of spoiled meat. Close to 17,000 pounds. Seems bad to do it, but I know it needs to be thrown away. Nobody from Franzenberg wanted to go on camera, but they tell us the reason all this meat went bad was because of freezer problems. But the answer sounds a little different when you talk to the Department of Agriculture, the agency that received complaints about the meat locker. I think there were also some complaints as to the, the meat didn't smell good, and so they, they, they had some concern about the condition of the product. That led to an inspection you can see what happened next. What we found was, was product that uh, we felt was not safe to be consumed. Franzenberg is an established business in Conrad. Folks around here have trusted the facility for years. Several months ago, a new owner took over. Some think he was overwhelmed. My meat's good, and uh, I'd certainly go back there again. Uh, he just, like I said, he's not a hunter, didn't realize the magnitude of the animals that was going to be coming in. And, while the facility did not sell meat directly to the public, it was a custom facility, and that means a customer brings meat in and has it processed for their own purposes. The good news, nobody got it sick. But if you do have any further questions about this, you can call the Department of Agriculture at 515-281-3338. Kevin and Cynthia. And will the facility face any kind of fines or anything? That actually has not been determined yet, but they will possibly be able to reopen as well as long as they can prove that the facility is clean and that they meet the specifications needed to run a meat locker. All right. Thanks, Chris. In other news, we now know a little bit more about the people who were shot and killed yesterday following a bank robbery in Irvindale. It happened at the West Bank on 99th Street in Irvindale. News Channel 8's Jeff Greenwood is live at the Irvindale Police Station right now where just over an hour ago, police wrapped up a news conference. Jeff? That's right, Kevin and Cynthia. Police say a family of three brothers and a woman were involved in yesterday's bank robbery here in Irvindale that ultimately led to a shooting. Uh, just a short time ago, police identified the two men who were killed. The first is 45-year-old Charles Simmons of Pasadena, California. Police say he drove the getaway van. The other man is his brother, 47-year-old Paul Simmons of Des Moines. Now, three men with what looked like handguns held up the West Bank branch in Urbandale just before 1045. Within minutes, someone outside the bank called police to report the robbery. Urbandale police spotted a minivan matching the description as the slow-speed chase, which police say didn't exceed 40 miles per hour, went west on Hickman, a second Urbandale officer joined in. Then the van turned north onto the interstate when an Iowa State trooper joined in. The van suddenly stopped, and police say this is what happened next. The driver of the vehicle, identified as Charles Simmons, exited the vehicle and advanced on officers, displaying a weapon in a threatening manner. At the same time, Paul Simmons, who was still in the vehicle, pointed his weapon at officers. All three officers fired upon the two suspects. 
Now, the gun on top is one of three BB handguns police recovered, one each from the men shot and one thrown out the window. The gun below or toward the right is a police Glock 10 millimeter. Police say in a split second, these officers had to judge the threat and react to it. Now, all three officers who fired shots are on paid administrative leave, two from Irvindale and one from the Iowa State Patrol. They're on leave with the respective departments as the Iowa DCI and those police departments investigate. Police say this case will go to a, jan a grand jury. Now, the two suspected bank robbers who survived appeared this morning in the Polk County Jail courtroom. They're both charged with first-degree robbery. The woman is 24-year-old Jeanette Freeman. She's from Pasadena, California. The man, the third of three Simmons brothers, and the only one to survive, is 56-year-old Terry Simmons. He does not list a current address, but he tells police he's originally from Des Moines. Now, Kevin and Jeanette, uh, the police spokesman, stresses that at the time, these officers were confronted with what looked like handguns, they had to make a split-second decision, and they reacted. All right, Jeff Greenwood reporting live for us from the Urbandale Police Station. Thank you. A Hamilton County judge has dismissed charges against an Ellsworth man. Investigators accused Ronald Conglin of murder and child endangerment in the death of his fiancée son, 14-month-old Jack Loader. The toddler died back in August of 2000 at this home in Ellsworth. Clongden... Uh, said at the time that Jack accidentally fell down the basement stairs. Court documents show medical experts say the fatal injuries likely did come from the fall. The documents say other bruises are considered accidental. A printing business here in Des Moines is going to be in the spotlight when President Bush visits there on Friday. The president will focus on what's turning out to be a controversial issue. KCCI News Channel Ace Michelle Parker joins us from the newsroom. And what's the president going to be talking about, Michelle? Well, President Bush is going to unveil plans for retirement savings, something a lot of people are thinking about because of the Enron scandal. It seems like a typical day at the Printer Incorporated. But as company okay. president William Benskin knows, there's a lot of anticipation as he and employees await the visit of George Bush. We're very, very excited. Uh, pleased uh, that, that he would consider us. President Bush will be talking to the employees here about the 401k plan the company has. Benson says it's a plan that's been in place for a long time with a lot of participation by workers. We've spent a lot of time on the education of, of our employees on how to use it, so I think that's uh, why we, we have such high participation. For President Bush, retirement security is a hot topic because of the Enron scandal and the meetings between Enron executives and the Bush administration. But Republican leaders say that hasn't hurt the president. When you're in, a, in a, an official capacity, you have a number of people uh, asking to meet with you to describe what's happening uh, within their industry on a regular basis. Back at the Printer Incorporated, employees are dealing with Secret Service precautions. It's an event, and uh, we understand that. We're excited. Now, a panel of Enron employees will talk to the president about their 401k plan. Also, in his visit, President Bush will campaign for Republican Congressman Tom Latham. Latham, rather. A fundraiser will be held at the Marriott Hotel in downtown Des Moines. All right. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Sounds like a busy day. Yes. Luke Roth, a well-known figure in the Republican Party of Iowa, has died. Roth died yesterday after a long battle with cancer. He was the district director for Congressman Greg Gansky, as well as the state campaign director for President George Bush. Gansky paid tribute to Roth today in remarks to the House of Representatives, saying that Roth had a big heart and believed passionately in American democracy. Luke Roth was only 48 years old. Well, the Grammy Awards, Kevin, just get started in about an hour from now, and you can watch the show live right here on Channel 8 starting at 7 o'clock. That's right. The biggest names in showbiz, especially the music industry, are filtering down the old red carpet right now, and Jeanette Trumpeter is there at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Joining us live, Jeanette, busy night. Kevin, it's getting a bit chaotic, and I just want to join in right now because we've got Mary J. Blige next to us being interviewed by The Early Show and see if we can hear anything. Can you get a shot of that, Bob? Are we seeing her? He's going to move for us. Now, this is just live television, folks, but we got Mary J. Blige next to us. you got to adjust here. A lot of women work hard on their body, and that's what they're selling. A lot of women work hard on their vocals, and that's what they're selling. A lot of people work hard, period, and get nominated for what they work hard for. So. Well, but do you think they're getting more respect now? More respect? I believe if they're demanding it, yes, they are. And I, it looks like they're demanding it. 
All right. Well, as you can see, the celebrities are coming. We've had some communication problems, so we're getting late. We're out of time, but we're going to have all these celebrities for you tonight. We'll be back then, live backstage at the Grammys. All right. Thank you very much. Jeanette Trumpeter reporting live from L.A. I look forward to that tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, it's time to go over to John McLaughlin and see if we have anything to look forward to in the forecast. I've got an intern hike right there and <laughs> show him. Let's talk about what's going on. School net temperatures right now on the mild side. 26 up in Rockwell City. Webster City, 28 degrees. Newton at 27. You head down around Creston and Sheridan. A little bit cooler today. Temperatures in the mid-20s. Let's talk about our weather headlines. And we are going to see a bright moon tonight. The moon will come up at about 637. It'll appear about 20% brighter as it's at its closest location to the Earth. Slight warm-up in the forecast, not due to the moon, however. And a storm system will be brewing in Missouri toward the weekend. We'll detail that in the main weather segment. All right. We noticed that moon last night. Everybody was sort of talking about it. And even brighter tonight, we'll have to yeah, look Get out it. there tonight. Bad moon rising. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, John. And we'll be right back. You're watching KCCI News Channel 8 at 6. Iowa's news leader with Kevin Cooney. Jeanette Trumpeter, Heidi Soliday Sports, and meteorologist John McLaughlin with exclusive live Super Doppler weather. This is KCCI News Channel 8. Welcome back. Iowa Governor Tom Vilsack says he has not decided if he will sign a bill that declares English the state's official language. Opponents of the idea protested today outside of the governor's mansion late this afternoon. They fear the English-only law will harm Iowa's tradition of welcoming immigrants. The governor says he has his hands full with budget problems right now, but that he is encouraged by what he has heard from lawmakers. You know, the House has indicated that they're willing to put additional resources into language classes, and I think that's a good thing to do. Uh, I've not heard from the Senate as to what their version is, but candidly, right now, the focus, the energy, the attention is on this because this is a, a, a very, very critical decision. That critical decision has to do with balancing the state budget and the potential for hundreds more layoffs. News Channel 8's Todd Magel will have more on that debate coming up tonight at 10. Well, supporters of a West Des Moines mega mall won a major victory before the Iowa Supreme Court. The court has rejected a claim that West Des Moines broke the law when it granted money to help start construction on the Jordan Creek Town Center. West Des Moines said the mall site was an urban renewal area, but competing businesses and nearby residents objected. The court says that West Des Moines followed all the legal requirements when they approved the incentives. Just a little bit warmer in the forecast. We'll have details on that when we come right back. This live Super Doppler 8 forecast is sponsored by your local High V food store. Keeping Central Iowa ahead of the storm. Your live Super Doppler 8 forecast. Sunshine returned back to the area today and the winds diminished substantially from yesterday. Again tonight when the moon comes up here in about 15-20 minutes, it'll appear a little bit brighter than normal as it's now at its closest point to the Earth as it has that elliptical or oval-shaped orbit around the Earth. 26 the temperature, partly cloudy skies, wind southwesterly at about 7 miles per hour. The dew point very, very dry at 1, so the humidity only 33% and the pressure falling slowly at 30.10. A look at some of our school net weather stations around the region. We'll take you up to uh, Cal Community. That's in Latimer, up to the north, about an hour and a half from Des Moines. 26 degrees currently, not much wind, a wind chill factor of just 18. We'll move on down to Coon Rapids Barrett, also 26 degrees, that light southwesterly breeze right now. And Creston High School, one degree cooler at 25. Winds also southwesterly. Live information here at six miles per hour. Statewide temperatures. Looking at the upper 20s around north central Iowa, as you head to the south and southwest, slightly warmer, 33 counts of bluffs, 34 currently in the uh, Sioux City area. As far as what's going to be happening, temperatures will be slowly warming. Now, today we hit 29, tomorrow we'll be in the low to mid 30s, and then we'll start to change things a little bit as we head into the weekend. Southerly winds bringing in a little bit of cloud cover across southwestern Iowa today, but no significant moisture. You saw those dew points in the single digits, so... No real chance for any precipitation as we head through tomorrow and into Thursday, excuse me, Thursday into Friday. But then things will change. Look out here by late Friday or Thursday. 
storm system starting to develop, and this is actually going to move its way down across northern Missouri, the Kansas City area, Kirksville, all under the gun for some significant snow, and parts of southern Iowa also will have the potential for some snow from this system. Again, this is going to be Friday, and we'll keep an eye on that as things get a little bit closer. Okay, Thursday morning temperature shaping up like this, mid to upper teens across southern Iowa, readings near 20 as we head into the midday hours. You'll see already warmer than today's high, should be around 30 in the Fort Dodge area, low 30s down to the south, and we'll bump things up a couple more degrees before we round out temperatures after sundown tomorrow. For tonight, 13 degrees, a few flurries, but again, the dew point's very low, so not much of any significant chance of snow for tonight. 33 tomorrow, basically partly sunny skies. With the sunshine, a few little cumulus clouds could pop up, produce a flurry or two, but we'll be watching for later on in the week for a chance of snow in southern Iowa and northern Missouri. There's your five-day forecast. Again, mid-30s for Thursday, dropping off a bit Friday with a chance of snow. That appears best about the southern third of Iowa, but we'll keep an eye on that. It gets a little bit closer, 25 Saturday, and then we start to moderate temperatures for early next week. To show you what a winter we've had, this looks like the longest cold streak we've had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's week. not that bad. And it's nothing. Right. Thank and we're you, almost Jim. into March. Great. The regular season comes to an end tonight for the Iowa State women. We'll show you how they're preparing to tame the Baylor Bear. And will an injury ground Air Jordan? We will have the latest on the NBA superstar's condition after his knee surgery. Mark Meisenheimer and Sports. Next. For up to the minute weather information, day or night, call the live Super Doppler 8 forecast at 247 8880. Sponsored by Hyundai. Tonight's 8 Sports is sponsored by Edward Jones. Top 10 time in Ames tonight. The 10th rated Cyclones hosting 8th eight, ranked Baylor. It's the regular season finale for both teams. It should be a good one as Baylor is red hot right now. The Lady Bears have won 5 straight. It's also a chance to say goodbye to 4 seniors who have helped bring glory to the Cyclones. Whatever way you look at it, it is a big game. Well, yeah, I mean, anytime you, you play a quality team at the end of the season and, uh, you know, it's a chance to, to get a quality win. Everybody's looking for those big wins to, to impress the NCAA committee, to give yourself some momentum heading to the Big 12 tournament. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock tonight at Hilton. The Iowa women are leaving tomorrow for what they hope is another long run in the Big Ten postseason tournament. Hawks working out today. Last year in Lisa Bluter's rookie season as head coach of the Hawks, they put together a run which included toppling Purdue in the championship. This time around, Iowa is the third seed. And this is the time that every coach dreams about their team peaking and going into the tournament, going into the NCAAs. And, uh, you know, we hope that we're among that group that is. Um, so uh, I, I hope that does happen for us. And uh, I think it did last year. They're playing very well right now, too. And uh, they're playing in, with a lot of momentum. So um, we're really going to have to work hard and, and play a very good game. That they will. The Hawks will face an Indiana team looking at Conseco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis as if it's the Hoosiers' home court. Game time is 11 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Steve Alford's sophomore season truly hasn't lived up to his first one, but there is still time for the Iowa men to get hot. This was the scene about a month ago when the Hawks held off Michigan State by four points at Carver-Hawkeye. Saturday, these two teams closed out their regular seasons in East Lansing, both teams coming off a of victory. I do think we're playing well. We've got. I like how we've been practicing. We've uh, guys seem to be listening. Uh, it seems like um, uh, they're really attentive to what's going on, and that's encouraging because I think there's been times this year where I haven't sensed that as the coach. It's Iowa and the Spartans at the Breslin Center Saturday at 3:37. Mark it on your calendar. Michael Jordan, the former Superman of the NBA, now referred to as Floor Jordan, has endured. Some normal wear and tear on his knee. That explains the torn cartilage found today during surgery. Jordan will miss at least five games with the Wizards. Normal recovery time to repair such an injury is two to six weeks. Something tells me he will be back early. He is Michael Jordan. And you know, they've been talking about contraction with the Minnesota Twins. Minnesota Twins in spring training baseball today against the Reds. They clobber the Reds 13 to nothing. Todd Sears, he is from Ankeny. He drives in three runs. Excellent, and it's great to see baseball being played Spring again. Spring training. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Mark. We'll be right back with a look at the stocks.
Today's Market Report is sponsored by the Des Moines office of A.G. Edwards & Sons. Take another look at that forecast. Okay, temperatures in the mid-teens tonight and low to mid-30s tomorrow. Thank you, John, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you again tonight at 10.30 after the Grammys.